Off to my right, may I bring your attention to, I believe, what is a Kaplan Meyer plot? Is an incredible observation. And this observation is the reduction of all cause mortality from those consuming cocosamine and chondroitin. Now, the chart's a little confusing because the green is actually the non users, the red is the users of cocosamine and chondroitin. And of course, the chart is showing the overall survival outcome. I believe it is 16,000 individuals above the age of 40. But as a service to our viewers, I'm going to get right into the meat of the study first. And then afterwards, we'll go into the back end of the full study itself to see exactly how they controlled the confounding factors and other incredible finds they discovered in those that were consuming glucosamine and chondroitin on a regular basis. So, right into the, this graph right here, or a plot. Let's read through it. As we follow, respondents taking glucosamine and chondroitin were about 49% less likely to experience cardiovascular mortality while controlling for age. Cocosamine and chondroitin use was associated with a 39% reduction, and you ready for this? A 65% reduction in all cause and cardiovascular mortality, respectively. Now, they have a hypothesis as to why that number is so strong. But even as there were some confounding factors, the things that could interfere with the data, for those not familiar, or biases that may have uh, crept their way in, that is an incredible number overall. So, with that in mind, let's get, proceed right into the research as follows. That, I mean, 65% reduction is just an amazing number. But to proceed, glucosamine may reduce overall death rates as effectively as regular exercise. To proceed forward. Glucosamine supplements may reduce overall mortality about as well as regular exercise does. They're not saying don't exercise. We're going to get to that part in a second. According to a new epidemiological study from West Virginia University. Does this mean, does this mean, it's an important quote before we go to the full study. Does this mean that if you get off work at 5 o'clock one day, you should just skip to the gym? Take a glucosamine pill and go home instead, said the researcher who led the study. That is not what we suggest. Quoting, keep exercising, but the thought that taking a pill would be beneficial, this beneficial, I should say, to add to, add to the quote, is intriguing. Meaning, they saw the information, they saw the outcome, they started measuring the results, and they're saying, hey, this is an incredible observation. We need to do some full direct studies involving glucosamine and Jordan to see if this could be replicated uh, potentially in a double blind random uh, placebo type effect. But to proceed as follows, now I'm going to go to the full study. Here are some methods. Combine data from 16,686 participants in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey between 1999 and 2010, merged with the 2015 public use linked mortality file. Calc proportional hazard models were conducted for both CVD and all cause mortality. This is the hypothesis as to potentially why glucosamine or and or chondroitin or both had such an incredible impact. This is, I mean, obviously we all think of glucosamine and chondroitin for the joints, but what if there was something more to it? What if it had an imp, uh, a positive benefit that we we're not looking at? In this case, now they are. Let's proceed. Inflammation and cytokine effects have been suggested as one of the possible mechanisms for the effects of glucosamine and chondroitin on mortality. In double-blind randomized crossover study in adult men and women, Navarro and colleagues found that serum C-reactive protein, how many times have we heard that? Concentrations were 23% lower after glucosamine and chondroitin compared with placebo, meeting the p-value. In the proteomics analysis in the same study, several pathways were significantly different between the interventions after bon, uh, Bonferrati correction, that I could speak today, the most significant being a reduction in the cytokine activity pathway. Now, right off the bat, saying cytokine activity pathway, a lot of the you know, COVID researchers and scientists out there, then they go, that's interesting. So don't be surprised to see glucosamine having different applications in the near future. Other investigations have found an association between suppression of certain phosphorylation pathways and the anti-cancer effect of glucosamine. 
Still, other studies have found that glucosamine can reduce kidney injury, listen, rodents, through attenuation of oxidative stress. Glucosamine has also been found to influence low-density lipoprotein cholesterol size and binding capacity in a study of aortic smooth muscle, a mechanism that could potentially reduce the development of arterial sclerosis and subsequent cardiovascular disease. These are dimensions to glucosamine and chondroitin, which a lot of the public is not quite aware of because we're focusing on joints. But however, though, that makes it an incredible, incredible supplement overall, just through the spectrum of potential benefits and outcomes that it can yield a consumer. To proceed to the associations. Could the association observed between glucosamine and chondroitin intake mortality be due to another factor? Yes. But this is made less likely by the consistent direction of the findings in the diverse population settings in the United States and the United Kingdom. In all studies, the relationship was controlled for factors that might account for the relationship, including demographic and lifestyle factors such as exercise. Other possibilities include that otherwise healthy people taking supplements and therefore live longer. Controlling for age, race, sex, education, exercise can partially but perhaps not completely take the healthy people factor into account. A lot of those are biostatistics. Uh, statistics, uh, especially epidemiology, remember the healthy user thing uh, scenario, which when they started doing vaccinations and so on and so forth, it happened to be that the people who were taking the vaccinations tend to be healthier and therefore confounds the data. And that's what they're trying to imply here potentially. In conclusion, regular consumption of glucosamine chondroitin seems to be significantly associated with lower overall and cardiovascular mortality. Given the strength of the association, a 20%, 27% lower likelihood of overall mortality and a 58% lower likelihood of cardiovascular death, prospective studies may be warranted. I don't, let's just take the word may out of there. Must be warranted. Because if you could have a supplement that yields this incredible benefit, even an observational study such as, such as we see here, if there could be a direct causative effect in reference to glucosamine and chondroitin benefit an individual's health, especially at this level, wow, what an incredible, incredible breakthrough. Again, we're not discussing dosaging, we're not discussing brands, types, so on and so forth, with different combinations or other things that could be added to it. We just talked the observational study of individuals that tend to take glucosamine and chondroitin with other confounding factors calculated into the outcomes that you see or we saw together. Again, Ralph Turchiano signing off. Just to remind you, every Saturday night, Sunday morning, we do our data analytics in reference to COVID-19 data. Worldwide, I should say COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, controlling factors between nations, certain stringency indexes, and so on and so forth. Those familiar, you know what we do on the weekends. But you all are welcome to basically view those videos as well, just to give you a different perspective in reference to how data can be uh, beneficial and looked at the proper perspective. Again, Ralph Turk Channel signing off. Gratitude. Thank you. DUI citation will be there. Links will be there as usual. And as always, I'm grateful that you watch and I hope you find this information use. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.